welcome to the Lunchtime webinar for May 2016. Um, I'm Rosie Hare, and I'll now hand over to Stephen Gow, who's the um, Academic Support Officer's Academic Integrity Coordinator, who's going to run the session today. So, Stephen, I'll hand over to you now. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, can you just give me a green tick if you can hear me there? Excellent. It looks as if my microphone is working then. So yes, as Rosie has just said, I'm Stephen Gow. I'm the Academic Integrity Coordinator at the university. You'll get all these slides afterwards and the uh, video of the webinar will be made available. And also, after this, I'm going to send a couple of uh, screencast tutorials for a bit more depth on things that I don't have time to cover today. This is just a basic Turnitin uh, webinar, uh, unfortunately, and, but we should have some follow-ups looking in more detail at originality reports. So my details are here on the screen. You can see our website, the office I'm in, and the uh, email address there. So I'll just give you a bit of a background about me. So I'm the Academic Integrity Coordinator, and I'm responsible for these things that you can see on the board here, the Academic Integrity Tutorial for, for undergraduates and for uh, taught postgraduates as well, the new Research Integrity Tutorial for research students. We've got our uh, referencing style guides on our website and an email that staff and students can use for referencing queries. I also deliver the staff and student workshops on source use, referencing, and as you're here today, you can see I do the ones on Turnitin too. So in this section, session, we're just going to look at Turnitin as a text matching software um, and explain the capabilities in assessing the originality of the assignments and clarify how you can use it ethically uh, with your student groups. We'll also talk about briefly about how students have access to that as well. And we'll clarify on what basis, yeah, the, the students are given access to that. So if you have any questions, use the chat box on your left-hand side. So just in the chat box now, just briefly, if you could just write in what is Turnitin, just in the chat box there, just enter in what, what your understanding of it is. Okay, so people have obviously done their homework. Let's see. Ah, yes, a way of ensuring that work is not plagiarized. Yep. Anything else? Any others there? Okay, how to beat text matching. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll address that a little bit as well. We'll talk about that. Oh, good. Okay, electronic submission platform. So we've got a few different ideas on there. So I'll just clarify about this. Um, sometimes people call it plagiarism detection software, and that can be quite misleading. I would say that you are the plagiarism uh, detection software that because of the subjective sort of judgment or academic judgment that comes into deciding whether something's been plagiarized or not. Turn it in is an electronic submission platform, as James has rightly said there. It has a number of features. We just use the text matching software here at York, uh, the originality check. Um, there is also a grade mark and peer mark, but we don't use them here at York. So uh, people from other institutions who may have used um, grade mark before, we don't use it here, but if you speak to the e-learning team, they can give you uh, the alternatives that we use here and give you guidance on that. So yeah, it's text matching software and uh, it helps you to see where the text matches and then you can decide if it's plagiarism. So it's no substitute for your academic judgment. When Turnitin was first brought out, people would say, oh, anything above 25%, that's plagiarism and that should be punished. That's not the case at all, as we'll see. Uh, it depends on different disciplines, the type of assignment that you're doing, all of these different things. And Turnitin is just one, res one resource or tool that we have to hand. It's not completely foolproof, but it is the best one out there um, so far that we see. Um, uh, so what it does is it checks the work, the text, against a large database. This includes billions of web pages that is not password protected on the web. Um, 
all of the student papers that are submitted to Turnitin, it also checks those um, as well. So for example, if a student has submitted a paper last year, and it's in the Turnitin database because we've put it on there, if a student borrows a paper from um, the, a second year, a first year student borrows a paper from a second year and submits it as their own, then it will show up. Now that also brings into, uh, into question things about making sure that your assignments are plagiarism proof, for example, not running the same essay questions year after year after year, because then students can talk to each other. And that has always gone on before the internet um, has even existed. That's always, uh, that type of cheating has always gone on in universities. It also checks against a uh, database of articles, and Turnitin, Turnitin does have deals with uh, some of the major publishers to check their work as well. So if a student's copied and pasted a paragraph from a journal article, the chances are it's going to show up in Turnitin there. So I've given you the web addresses down here, turnitinuk.com, and also Authenticate. Staff often have questions about whether they can use it to check their own work. Uh, that's not what Turnitin's for. Turnitin's for checking student work. So we're going to look at some examples now and uh, just ask you what do you think Turnitin is highlighting. Some of you may have never have seen a Turnitin report before, so just take this chance to familiarise yourself with it. So what do you think Turnitin is highlighting here? Just a brief answer, write it in the checkbox. Okay, so any ideas? Uh, do, do you think this is a good or bad example of student work? Okay, it's a derivative, okay, it's not so good. Does anybody see any citations in this? Okay, Wen said it could be better referenced. So any citations here? Well, actually we can see here there is one, but this is included within the thing that Turnitin has matched. Uh, can anybody see any quotations here? No quotations, okay, good, somebody's helping me out there with, yep, so what this is showing is, to see this 30 here, this is corresponding to a text which is matched. Now, if you were to scroll down this list here, or click on here, uh, unfortunately we can't show you a live view at the moment, then we would see what a text that it's matching to, possibly online. Um, so this one is an example of plagiarism, okay? We have these matches here, we have no quotations, we do have a reference, but that's also matched, being, it looks as if it's been copied and pasted with this paragraph. So here we've got, um, as a person rightly said, there's a derivative, um, and it's a copy and paste job really, students have been copy and pasting, maybe just paraphrasing the odd word here and there, but overall we have the overall percentage up here is 63%. Now, I said earlier that the, you can't just go on the percentage, although if you see a high percentage such as this, you're thinking that the original work is, uh, the, that the student has done is less than half of the entire assignment here, so that would automatically get you asking questions about the work. So you would scroll through, you can click on the number three here, 5% of this paper has come from this one website here, so you can actually click on this and it will take you through. Uh, to those websites. So in this example here, we can see, um, don't worry, you'll get these slides afterwards, you can see we've got the similarity index, which is this percentage here. Um, we can switch the view, and you'll be able to see this in the screencast uh, tutorial that I do. Um, we've got the views to secondary matches, so you can click another arrow and see more matches. So it might match to more than one website. And if you're investigating a case of uh, plagiarism, for example, you can do a lot more in-depth analysis of the reports. But this takes time to become familiar with that. I can assist you with that. You can also use the button down here to print or download um, a report as a PDF. And um, up here as well, if you were to click on a match, you have a text box, box which will show you how it matches, how it's integrated in with the, with the uh, paper there. So any questions at this stage? Okay, I'll just move on then. How about this one? Have a look at this example. What do you think here? Aha, yes, Jennifer's mentioned there, there's a long quote. A lot of the text is matching to text eight. 
Yep, so we've got quite a long quote here. So this one, this is why it's text matching software and not plagiarism detection software here. If you were to just be going on the match here, then um, it would actually, you would look at that 38% and you think this is 38% plagiarized. However, it's not. There's a quotation in there. So this is more a case of poor practice rather than academic misconduct, and that's a major distinction to make. It also shows you how Turnitin can be used in a formative sense to help students improve their work. Um, you could point out to them as a lecturer, look, you haven't plagiarized here, but to have 38% of um, your work as either quotes uh, that you've taken from the work, and then that's not good. And also we see here, we see um, that there is a reference there, but it's not in the correct format. So this highlights some learning opportunities uh, for the student. How about this example? Is this plagiarism, do you think? Okay, it's not plagiarism, so what, what's the issue here then? What is Turnitin matching to? Okay, good, Kathy. The, the, yeah, many students will have used these same secondary sources. A lot of the time, perhaps you and I have done this as well, if you're making your reference list, you may copy and paste the reference over as it fits the format that you've been referencing in Harvard, for example, or APA, something like that. So a lot of the time, these reference list bibliographies, call them what you will, they m match uh, to other papers. So a lot of the time with, um, when you're looking at student work, there's usually about a 10 to 15% buffer in the Turnitin percentage, which is the bibliography or the reference list. Um, you can actually use the filter buttons to filter out the reference list and quotations as well, and I show you how to do that in one of the screencast uh, videos that I'll send afterwards. So this one is a bibliography uh, reference list. So we notice here this one's 29%. Uh, as I said earlier, th this could be fine. You need to look into that. It could be that the student has a long bibliography and a few carefully selected quotes, and these add up to quite a high percentage um, of text matching in a document. So what we've got in Turnitin is we've got the common text matches that you'll see, and this really helps you to understand and interpret the originality report. You've got unacceptable matches, uh, which are the copied text without acknowledgement that we saw in the first example there. There was an acknowledgement in there, but Turnitin really highlights the fact that the reference that they had was from copied and pasted from another paper. And Turnitin can often show this that where students haven't really read what they're citing or what they've put in the reference list. They've read another document and then um, they've copied and pasted from that and make it look as if they've read the work that's cited in that. So it, it can get quite complex when you're looking into the reports. Um, and again, I can assist you with interpreting that. A lot of the matches in Turnitin, I would say most of them are usually the acceptable matches of quotations, the bibliography, common phrases that you'll have in there, specialist terms, and meta-language. Now, this is unavoidable because of the way that Turnitin works. It doesn't check every word, otherwise everything would match. It checks chunks of words, five or six words. So as it's checking through these chunks of words, you might have in conclusion and then very similar wording to another essay of all the millions of student essays and billions of things put on um, the web. They might match just coincidentally. So you can take this um, into account when you're looking there. When it does start to get suspicious, you, know, you start to notice that the, the percentage of text that matches in a paragraph gets longer and longer. And often it will be quite big sections. So you've got different types of matches that you're looking for. So no percentage is safe here. So you're not looking, oh, over 25%, that's plagiarism. That's not the case. It very much depends on the assignment. Uh, a reflective piece, for example, might have 0% of text matching because the student's reflecting and writing um, in a quite original way about a topic nobody else has written about. Or it could be um, a law essay where they've got lots of footnotes where it's up to 40, 45% of matches in there. So you've got to consider the text match and decide if it has been appropriately cited or quoted. Uh, the average match is, oh, is between around, I should have checked that one, is around 20%. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, the percentages depend on the type of assignment and the discipline that you're writing in. So the question for you is, 
as staff, where do I find Turnitin? Now, Turnitin is located here in your Yorkshire VLE. Um, there is a, sometimes institutions access it through the Turnitin website, but here it's not. It's integrated into the VLE, and we have different types of VLE sites. If you're not sure if you're on any of these, you can contact me at Integrity at York, and I can tell you which one you're on. So there's individual staff checkpoints for checking one-off pieces of work. There's the module, course, and class checkpoints, where you can check your whole class as part of your process of electronic assignment. And then there's the student checkpoints where the students use, and they're separated from the staff um, checkpoints. So staff can routinely use Turnitin as part of their electronic submission for whole class cohorts. As I said, so your whole class, they submit electronically as an anonymous assignment, and then these can be taken into Turnitin, and I'll show you that in a moment. Or it can just be used on a case-by-case -case basis. Students uh, have access, and this is sometimes what we get questions around. We'll address that in a moment. But, so what we have here is uh, the students' access to Turnitin is completely separate from the staff. They attend a one-hour workshop, which are organized either by the departments um, or that we have open sessions 50 weeks a year, every Wednesday at 12.30 around uh, campus that they can attend. They, they learn about uh, Turnitin in this. They look at some examples, discuss them, take a short test, and then they get given 25 submission points so they can check their own work in there. There is also a distance workshop available for distance and part-time students only. Um, we really want students to be coming along to the workshops, discussing Turnitin, also thinking about integrity in general as well. Uh, so hopefully students can use Turnitin to develop their academic writing, to reflect on it, and think about their integrity as well. So staff can use, um, I'll just briefly go over this, you can come back and revisit the individual policy points, but you can use it, you're allowed by the university to use it for monitoring um, papers and for detecting plagiarism and misconduct. So students accept this in the ordinance and regulations. And um, you've got to make sure that you make students aware that they will be using Turnitin. Um, so this can be in the department, so departmental handbooks, and it can also uh, be on the checkpoint itself, just a reminder to students to let them know that. And support is available from me for interpreting originality reports if you're not sure about things. Uh, so this is the part of the guide to assessment uh, 4.8.3. You can come back and visit this yourself. So as it says here, clearly state the policy regarding the use of safe assign, which is an alternative which we don't really use, but we have access to, or turn it in. So we've just got a couple of questions there. Do staff have to attend a workshop before they can use it? No, we don't have that. We, it would be preferable that staff um, attend a workshop or, for example, come to the webinar or view this afterwards. Uh, we do prefer that staff um, come and speak to somebody, but sometimes they've used it before and we, we understand how busy staff are, but they know, they, they know on all the Turnitin uh, sites, VLE modules they have access to, that they have support and where to get it if they need it. So student use of Turnitin, the student attends the workshop, they get access to 25 checkpoints after completing the test, they complete a draft of their work, they can upload this then to Turnitin, analyze their originality reports and revise uh, the draft and submit it. Uh, so there's no staff involvement in this process. So I'll just uh, open this up quickly for a question. So what do you think the potential benefits of students using Turnitin uh, could be? Just write them in your chat box, uh, chat box please. Okay, yeah, so some people um, have added in some things there about what the benefits might be of using, uh, of student use of Turnitin. So they can check their work uh, before submitting it to check if they've got any errors um, that they int intend making. Uh, helps, to, yeah, it's just a reflective process reflecting on their writing as well, improve their referencing. So just thinking about this, um, they're all around, around awareness about this. How about uh, any drawbacks of them using it? Okay, excellent. So we've got some, some of the major drawbacks, as staff always point out. They, they could be checking that their plagiarism hasn't been detected and rewriting things. Um, they could be obsessed with bringing down their percentage. Um, and also, yeah, just that issue about them hiding uh, their plagiarism. Now, 
what we actually find when we use Turnitin, what I find at least as well, and with staff that I speak to, that uh, a lot of the time with plagiarism, there's lots of anecdotes about students, and we often t t talk about cases and things like that. So there is a bit of a negative discourse around plagiarism and things like that. The students that come along to the workshops, they book on, or the departments have them, it really reinforces the integrity of the institution, I think. We trust the students to use the software responsibly. Uh, we, stuff, we trust them to be honest about these things as well. Uh, it's a fairness issue as well. Now, if anybody's ever submitted to a, a journal that says they're going to run their uh, work through uh, plagiarism software such as Turnitin, you might start to think, oh, I'm a bit anxious about it. I'm pretty sure I haven't, but I would like to check myself. And I think a lot of students are in that situation. They run the work through Turnitin, and then they think, uh, then they just think, oh, right, OK. They see the report, and they're like, oh, that's what it is. Oh, that's quite interesting. And it does help them to reflect. So the students have to go to a workshop well in advance and uh, before they submit their assignments. And they, they really build that into their process. I'll get a draft finished for here. I'll run it through Turnitin. Then I'll come back and reflect on it. Um, students, we still find students do commit plagiarism, even though they have access to Turnitin. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's quite difficult to, to eradicate plagiarism completely. But I, I think it does help. Another point to make is that if we don't give them access and training, there are lots of free tools out there. And then the students won't have the training to use them responsibly. And then some of the other tools, they aren't so great and can reuse students' work. Uh, for example, there's one uh, essay, um, essay writing company which also provides plagiarism detection software. And the students don't read the small print. And then their essays that they upload to there can be used, reused again. So it's actually, um, we find it better to train the students give them access, and then they can ask us questions about it. We also f focus on that it's not just Turnitin, the, or the percentage they need to focus on. It's about their writing, their note taking, and this type of, um, it's, a, it's a lot more than just checking the text matching uh, software. So staff use of Turnitin. So you can use it to investigate to help you investigate misconduct. And appeals could scrutinize Turnitin's use. So for example, if a, um, if a lecturer was just say, everything over 25% is misconduct, then that wouldn't stand up in the, uh, in the appeals of the student. Or, or I don't think it would even get through to a case of uh, misconduct. It's got to be that you are highlighting the parts of the Turnitin report that provide evidence that, that a plagiarism has been committed. So that's very much about the way that you interpret the originality report. So when you're looking at the originality report, you've got to think about it's the quality of the match, if that's the right sort of word to use, uh, not the quantity. And consider what type of match there is. Consider why there's a match there. Um, and you can also use the filter functions to get a full picture. And as I said before, it can be used as a sim stimulus for writing feedback as well. So I won't uh, spend too much time on this question, but just a question for you to consider if you're new to the department um, or if you ha haven't been using Turnitin before is, do you know your department's approach to what Turnitin is? The university doesn't have any central approach. Uh, a number of different departments, we understand they have different ways of working, um, and we try to accommodate them the best that we can. So. If you um, speak to, for example, the Chair of Board of Studies or, or the administrators in the department, you should be able to get some more information. If you still can't get any information, you can email me um, and I can support you with um, setting up a way of checking through work as well. But it has to be a departmental discussion. We don't want individuals just doing their own thing with Turnitin. Um, so speak to people in your department. Uh, so for individual assignment checking, this is um, every department has a VLE site called Turnitin Checkpoint with the department name and then staff only on the end. Um, and if you're not on one of these, I can add you to that. Um, so what happens here is the students have submitted their work electronically. And so they have electronic files. You've received your batch for marking. Um, if you're reading through an essay and you start to think, oh, just a minute. I'm suspicious of plagiarism here. Rather than go through Google trying to search for things, you can go to the site and you can upload the work, and then you can check it. Um, and then after that, you can take your um, the misconduct procedure from there. So that would just be for an individual piece of work. Um, 
So this is the staff site here. As we can see here, here's a history site. There are two different types of checkpoints that we have here. One for draft work and one as a finished uh, work uh, turnitin submission point. The finished work uh, is for final uh, summative work. So once a student has submitted it for assessment, we can use this checkpoint. And this means that it will become part of the database for checking. Um, so later, if any other work matches that, it will match against that. Now, in certain cases, uh, we don't want it to match against future work. So for example, a good example of this would be uh, a chapter, a draft chapter of a PhD thesis. So if a supervisor gets this and suspects um, that there may be some plagiarism in it, they can submit to this checkpoint uh, and have a look through. Uh, now, it may be that they don't find anything or they do find anything, but the important thing is here, it won't then match all of that work to the later theses or um, to journal articles if the, the PhD candidate goes on then to publish work. So that's very important. Now, when the students use Turnitin, they used a, the draft work submission point. So students sometimes worry about if I submit my work, will it not match later when I hand it in? No, it won't. So there's two different types of submission points, and staff acts, have access to both of them here. Students only have access to the draft work uh, submission point. And I can answer any uh, questions about this uh, afterwards. Now, the second type is a, co a cohort assignment checking, and quite a few departments have uh, integrated this with their electronic assignment uh, submission now, their anonymous assignment submission. So if students submit their assignments electronically, the administrator, do uh, administrator downloads all of these assignments, and then they have a zip file. Now, they're going to send these out to staff for marking or print them, whatever they do. Um, they send them out for marking. And what they can also do is take them to the, uh, to the department submission site and upload um, a zip file to Turnitin. And this just takes a few minutes. It takes a while to set up the whole process, um, but once it's in place, it's a very quick process. So the administrator will then carry out a quick check um, for the whole cohorts. And I'll show you that on the next page, what I mean by this. Uh, and they can inform if there are any outliers. Uh, so if there's one that's got 50% that stands out, they can look at the anonymous examination number, which Turnitin automatically uh, puts, generates on there. So that matches the student exam number, um, examination number. And then they can inform whoever's marking that paper uh, that there is a high match and they might want to check the Turnitin report there. And also, afterwards, if uh, staff, the marker's reading through, they can then go into their Turnitin um, assignment checkbox, and they can have a look for that paper if they're suspicious. So they don't have to run it through themselves. So this is um, an example of good practice. Uh, the Center for Applied Human Rights, let me uh, use their example here. Uh, so they have all of their assignments. So they have one draft checkpoint, but then they have their dissertation checkpoint. They have this module here, Defending Human Rights, Truth, Justice, and Reparations essay. So they have all the assignments down there. So if a staff member wants to check, they can just come in here. So the administrator comes in, submits a zip file, just clicks on the view complete, clicks on zip file upload, and then just uploads it. This then, uh, Turnitin then brings up all the papers together in one checkbox. So if a staff is checking through uh, their essays, marking them, and they want to check an examination number, they can just come here, and they can just click on that. So as we can see, they're all anonymous, and you can just, so for example, you could see, oh, 23%, that one's the highest one, I'll just have a quick look at that. Now actually, this example here, um, shows often what is the case. Sometimes staff worry that, oh, if we start running everything through Turnitin, we're going to find tons of plagiarism. I don't think that's actually the case. If anything, running whole cohorts of work through Turnitin reinforces the fact that students, are, the majority of students are quite honest. Um, and you often see this case that it goes from 4% up through slowly 9%. So you can see a gradual rise there. Sometimes you will get an outlier, and that's what um, staff could be looking for. So if we imagine another paper here that says 50%, we might think, okay, that's a bit strange. Uh, we'll highlight that to the um, marker to have a look at. 
So the common questions are, um, how, how do I get added to the Turnstein VLA module? And the answer to that is you can email Integrity at York with a request. Um, if you do have any problems where you've submitted to the wrong checkpoint or any problems, do not delete the checkpoint. This is sometimes a problem that uh, staff come to me with. They delete a checkpoint thinking they've deleted the papers from Turnitin and then make a new checkpoint and re-upload the work. This means that you get lots of 100% duplicate submissions because in order to have something removed from Turnitin, you need to contact me and I contact Turnitin to have those removed. So if you've made a mistake, contact me. Uh, that's for administrators and staff as well. So if, for example, you accidentally submitted to a final submission point when you were supposed to do a draft um, and you want to have it removed, contact me and I can do that for you. But this, does, this isn't immediate. It does take a few days. If there are any other problems, I can sometimes use the filters to give you a report that is more accurate. Um, there. So that's all I've got to say really at this point. So I think we'll uh, hand over to Rosie and then open up to some questions.